This video looks at the use of symbolic algebra within MATLAB. Previous resources then have demonstrated how to use basic MATLAB functionality. Next it's useful to consider how MATLAB supports basic algebra, that is variables which do not contain numerical values. So that's the key difference. Earlier on we focused on algebra which actually had numbers in it, so number crunching. Now we're focusing just on algebra. So this will allow us to do things such as differentiation, integration, solving equations, function descriptions and so forth. Now sometimes you'll need to automate mathematical operations is quite important in coding and the symbolic toolbox is an easy way of doing this. So what you'll find is the operations that we're going to go through in this video actually help you code things automatically in the long term which can be very useful. So common symbolic algebra options. First of all we'll do the basics. How do you define a symbolic variable and how do you define a function such as f of x? We'll look at things like differentiation and integration. How do you calculate tangents and normals automatically? How do you solve ODEs? Taylor series? Solving equations? Now if you want a complete list of what MATLAB will do for you then you should type help symbolic because there's no way a brief video can cover it all. It would take hours. Let's do the basics then. What is a symbolic variable? So symbolic variables do not, here's the key word, they do not contain values. They are there to support algebra. So here you'll see an example. I've put an algebra expression alpha w plus z squared cos gamma. There's no numbers in there. It's just an algebraic expression. Now, in order to create a symbolic variable, you use this command sims, S-Y-M-S, and after that, list the variable names that you would like to use. And once you've done that, you can do various algebraic operations. So here we've illustrated differentiation. You see we've gone diff FZ, and what that stands for is do the partial differentiation of F with respect to Z. So if we look at our expression up here for F, then we can see if I differentiate that with respect to z, then what do I get? 2z cos gamma. Now, just so you know, MATLAB denotes symbolic variables with a classification of sim, which you can see here. So if you go who's on the variables and you see sim, you know it's representing algebra. It does not have a number within it. Differentiation then. First define your variables as symbolic, so you'll see that's what I've always done at the start. Make sure I've defined my symbolic variables here, I've done sims x, y. Then I can define my various expressions. So here you'll see I've defined f as an expression here using my symbolic variable. So f equals 4x to the 4 minus 2x plus 1. And then I simply use this function diff in order to differentiate, which is shown here. Now, if you don't put a second argument into diff, it assumes that your function has only one variable. And here, f has only one variable, x. So MATLAB says it's obvious that when I write diff f, what I want is df dx. That's obvious because f only contains one variable, which is x. So you'll see here that it works. There's my definition of f. And when I do diff f, what do I get? 16x cubed minus 2, and you'll see that's exactly what I expect. We've got a second example. There's g, which is x plus 1 over e to the x sine x plus x squared. Not a particularly nice expression if you had to differentiate that on pen and paper. But here, I've just written, as you can see, diff g, which is going to give me dg dx, because x is the variable, and there's the answer. And you'll notice it's running off the page here because it's a long expression and you'd have to scroll on the page to see the rest of it. What about integration? Assuming the function is symbolic, then the function int will attempt to integrate for you. So here you'll see I've got an expression f, 4x to the 4 minus 2x plus 1, and here I've gone int f and it's given me the answer. So because here the integration is straightforward, then MATLAB 
has been able to do it. But you do need to be careful because if you give MATLAB some nasty expressions, it may fail. Now, the second example here is just integratable. See cos y plus tan y minus sine y. And when I've gone int f2, then MATLAB has managed it. It's not a particularly nice expression, but it has managed it. And you'll notice here that the variable is y, not x. And I haven't told MATLAB the variable is y. I've just written int f2, and MATLAB's worked it out for itself. It said there's only one variable in this, so you, when you say int fun2, you must mean integrate with respect to y. Now the warning, integral may fail if it has a non-simple form. So MATLAB's not a very robust integrator, but it will certainly do the simple ones for you. Now it will also work for functions of many variables, but if you're going here, then you need to see help int for more instructions. What about tangents? The expression for a tangent curve is known and all the terms can be obtained therefore with the symbolic toolbox. So here you go. Here's the tangent curve. The tangent to the curve f of x, and I'm going to write the tangent as t of x, is given by f of a plus x minus a df dx evaluated at a. So that's a standard tangent expression you'll all be familiar with. And the key thing is because all these terms are known, I can put it into MATLAB code using the symbolic toolbox. So here you'll see what we've done. We've defined our expression f. We've defined the point where we want the tangent. There you are, a equals 1. I've now worked out the derivative, df dx, because you'll see I need the derivative here. I've then evaluated f at a, so this is the f of a term. I've then evaluated df dx at a, so that's that term there, so this one corresponds to that term there. And then I've simply written the expression. Here you'll see that's f of a, and here you'll see I've got x minus a into df dx at a. I've just simply written down the expression here explicitly. And MATLAB's come back and said, OK, that's given me this expression here, 14x minus 11. So the key thing is I can put this into code and it's automated. And I can change f and I can change a and it's automated. So once the code's written, it works. And that's the key point again summarized. The tangent line is determined automatically by the code. Now, if you wanted to do a normal, then obviously you could do it in a very similar fashion. What about Taylor series? Now, automatic generation of Taylor series is very useful, and so MATLAB provides a file, and unsurprisingly, it's called Taylor.m. So how does this work? Well, you'll see I've given an example here. I've defined some function g, which is clearly a function of x. And then in order to get the Taylor series, I use this command Taylor. I put in the name of the function, and then you'll see, where do I want to expand about? So it's expansion point. I'm expanding about 0. And then you'll see there's a second argument, which is order. Now, order is taken as the number of terms. So if you look here, I put order equals 5, and here's the answer that's come out. And you'll see there are five terms. So order doesn't actually mean order in the strict sense of the polynomial order. It actually means the number of terms, which is slightly confusing. But you'll soon get used to that. Now, um, obviously, I can also expand about other values. So here you see I've expanded about 1. And when I've done that, you'll notice in my answer I've got this x minus 1 squared, x minus 1 cubed, and so on. So MATLAB has actually given the answer in the form that I expect, given I've said expand about 1. If you want to explore the functionality of Taylor in more detail, then as ever, use the built-in help in MATLAB. Type help Taylor. Sometimes it's convenient to extract the numerator and denominator of complicated expressions. And there's a very easy function to do this. It's called numden, numerator, denominator. And you'll see the um, Use is very, very simple. Here I've defined g1, which has got a clear numerator and denominator. And then to extract the numerator and the denominator separately, I just use this command here. So give me the numerator and the denominator equals numden g1. And you can see here, 
the answers have come out. <coughs> so I don't think I need to elaborate on that much more. There's a second example there where the symbolic variable now is y rather than x. And again, you'll see it's done the job for you. It's extracted the numerator and the denominator. OK, ODEs. Now, in this particular resource, we're not going to do ODEs because there's an entire resource on ODEs in the MATLAB for control section. So if you look down there, you'll see that's where it is. Use of MATLAB 1, solving ODEs. And you'll see the website address up there. Or alternatively, you can go straight to the YouTube link if you want. Some live demonstrations then. So there's our MATLAB window. And what we do is we go to the file MATLAB Basic 7. So the first thing I do, clear and set up my symbolic variables. And then you'll see I can define f and differentiate f. As simple as that. I can define g and differentiate g. I've got some other examples here, a different f and differentiate. And then I can actually differentiate twice. So you'll see, first I differentiate once, and then I differentiate the result. So MATLAB will allow you to double, triple, and so on differentiation. I can integrate and get back to original expression. MATLAB knows what the variable is. So here, you'll see I've got a function where the variable is y. And if I go diff, MATLAB automatically works out the variable is y and differentiates with respect to y. I can do functions which are somewhat more complicated. Look at this one here. It's got a numerator and a denominator. And I can differentiate it. And yeah, it's not a very nice expression. Look how long it goes. But there's this simplify function, which if simplification is possible, then what MATLAB will do is it will simplify it. So now look, you can see instead of this long expression which I had up here, I've now got a much shorter expression. So MATLAB, where possible, will try and simplify the expressions for you. Integration, I just use the int. So you see just int here. And again, MATLAB works out, if you just put int f or int fun2, it works out what the variable is and automatically integrates with respect to that variable. Finding a tangent, so here's the block of code we used to find the tangent. And there you can see the original function. And the tangent at x equals 1 is given by 14x minus 11. And of course, I could go in here and I could say, no, I don't want the tangent at 1. I want the tangent at 4. So I've changed that 4. And let's redo that code. And now you see the tangent 1022x minus 3071. Or I could say, no, it's not this function. It's actually got minus sine 2 times x. It's a different function altogether. So again, I can just use that code, and here's the tangent. Not such a nice expression, but it's still done it automatically for you. Numerators and denominators. So there you can see my g1 has got a clear numerator and denominator, and I can find them separately with this numden command. There's the numerator, x plus 1. There's the denominator, x squared minus 4. Symbolic algebra can also be used with matrices. So here you'll see I've defined a matrix. It's got x's and y's in it, 2 by 2 matrix. I can use inverse with symbolic algebra. Now, OK, it's not a very nice expression, but the key thing is MATLAB's done it, done it for you. I can do a determinant of a matrix. Again, not particularly nice, but it's done it in terms of these symbolic variables. As long as you don't make these too big or too complicated, you get a meaningful answer. If you try to make it too complicated, then MATLAB might freeze or take far too long. Taylor series. So here's a function g1, x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. And I can find the Taylor series for this using command like that. And here you'll see I've done the Taylor series about 0 and its fourth order because I've asked for five terms. I can change the expansion point, change the number of terms straightforward to do. Now, if I want to plot things, you remember that the command you use is this subs. So subs basically says substitute into a symbolic expression certain numeric values and work it out. So here, my x values 
are given by this command here, minus 1 to 1. And then I'm going to say work out the y values using subs. There's my function. And then substitute in the values. So I do that command there. And now I've got the x values and the y values. And that was the Taylor series, G1 Taylor about. The original function is just going to put in y value. So you'll see I've got y Taylor for the Taylor series, y value for the original function. And then I can overlay the plots of both of these. And that should be, I'm not sure which figure that's in, it's probably in figure two. There we go. So you can see the original function in blue and the Taylor series approximation in red. So if you want to plot symbolic expressions, you need this subs command. OK, you'll notice Taylor automatically works out the variable if you don't tell it. So here I've done Taylor sine y plus 2, order and 6. So if I do that one, and there you'll see it's done the Taylor experience expression, assuming that y is the key variable. You can construct symbolic expressions from a string. Now this is a bit messy and I'll leave you to look through this in your own time. So here you'll see I've generated a string f equals x squared plus 3x and then I've gone eval f. And what MATLAB does is it says I'm going to look in f and see if I can do anything with it. Well x is a symbolic variable. So we'll look at this expression and it will substitute in x being a symbolic variable. So if I now do fx, and if you go down here and go whose f and fx, you'll see the key difference. f is a string of a character array, but fx is now a symbolic expression. And if I write fx here, you'll see is the symbolic expression x squared plus 3x. So I can now differentiate. And that can be quite useful because if somebody sends you a function as a string, you can turn it into a symbolic variable. OK, I don't think I need to do much more of this. I think the uh, <coughs> reminder is that these files, MATLAB Basic 7 and indeed MATLAB Basic 7b, are available. You can open them and you can use this code and explore. I think this last one is just an interesting one. You'll see if I generate G2 here, you'll see it's cos x plus y. It's got two variables, x and y. When I use subs, I need to tell it Am I substituting in values for x or am I substituting values for y? So here you see I've gone subs g2 x comma 3, which basically means wherever you see an x, put in the value 3. So let's do that. And you'll see it's gone instead of cos x plus y, it's now y plus cos 3. If I want to substitute in values for x and y, you see here I use these curly braces. Substitutes, I'm giving you values for x and values for y. The first group are the values for x. The second group are the values for y. So if we do that, and there you see it's given you the answers. OK, let's go back to our show. So we've demonstrated the usefulness of the symbolic toolbox. It allows complex or messy algebra to be handled by the computer rather than by hand. And it also means, of course, you can check your own working. This includes differentiation, integration, solution of ODEs, normal algebra, of course, matrix inverse, and so on. And a remark, symbolic expressions can be created from strings. So if you've got something as a string, you can turn it into symbolic expression. And can also be evaluated with specified numerical values where you need this, for example, to do some plotting.